Um, now let's see what we can do with our translation memories. Uh, for this we need to go to the translation memories view and we should open one. So I will go to my training course folder and I have some sample TMs here. Uh, now the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to export information from uh, this um, translation memory to be able to say um, create an auto-suggest dictionary from the TMX file. So I go export I select the path and I select some name and I go finish. So as I'm done I can view the result. And the result is this TMX file. Uh, this file can be used by you in creating your auto-suggest dictionaries. But in this case I'd like to populate some other translation memory with this TMX file. So I need to open some other uh, translation memory in my case, this is uh, a memory uh, where uh, Russian is the source language and English is the target one. So I open. Let's say I can use a memory from the for autosuggest folder that I created before. This one. And I go import. Add files. Desktop. And I select this file. Um, well, you can see that in this dialog you have a number of options available to you. Uh, like here, we can uh, set the way some unknown fields uh, should be treated. This means that if you have some extra fields assigned to some of the translation units or segments, they might be either skipped and ignored or they might be added to your translation memory. Uh, since I want my transition memory to, uh, to contain as many um, entries as possible, I'd rather uh, choose the first option. And as to these uh, scenarios, we have three options as well. The first one would be importing a TMX file with the initial formatting data deleted. The second one would be the same but with the initial formatting data preserved. And the third one would be importing two variants of the TMX file. Uh, this is some kind of a versatile um, scenario, so I prefer to select this one. I go next. Uh, nothing to change here, so I go finish and with the completion of the process. Um, now I have uh, zero errors. I have uh, 8,500 entries read and uh, about half of them imported. This means that uh, most of the information was already available in the translation memory. So I close it. Okay. Um, now we can uh, try a different thing with with importing, we can close this translation, these two translation memories, and let's try opening a different translation memory where English will be my source language and Russian will be target. Okay, I go import, and I will select a bilingual SDLX clip file. We can, for this purpose, we can choose um, a file from our sample project from the target folder, this one. So I go next. Now we can see that we are uh, offered to uh, import the segments containing uh, segments of these three statuses. Uh, since, since we most often deal with translated segments, we don't really need to change anything here. So I simply go next and uh, wait for the completion of the process. Now that I'm done, I can close it. So now both of those memories, let's go to them. Let's just have a look. Now both of these memories contain the information from those files that we just added to them. We can close it. Okay. Now uh, this is very useful when you are given some uh, bilingual files from your customers and you are asked and you are asked to add the, that information to your uh, current translation memories, uh, or you can add them to a new translation memory to be able to use in your projects. Um, now within this video, I also want to uh, view the menu called Options. Well, uh, here we have a lot of different options and uh, I'd like to only focus on those that I use in my work. 
So first up, let's go to the editor view. Uh, we have, uh, you can actually, yeah, you can actually uh, look through all of those uh, options and see which, which ones you'd like to modify, but I suggest focusing on the following ones. Like here we have an autosave option for, uh, for every 10 minutes. If you want it to be more frequent, you can minimize this value, right? Uh, also, let's try spelling. Uh, here you can go to um, custom dictionaries and you can actually uh, modify it. This means that every single word that you save from your target area will be saved in this dictionary. And if there and, and if there is some reason for you to delete one, you simply go to this window, to this dialog, and you delete the ones you would like to delete. Okay. Now we can also try the autocorrect. Here, if you want to, you may, might um, capitalize first letter of sentences if you'd like to uh, use this option. Font adaptation is also quite useful because here you can uh, check this box and you can set uh, the font to be of some particular size uh, which would uh, suit you most. Now we can also go to automation and here we have this option that I was telling you about before it means copying source when no match is found, right? For you to actually uh, copy all of the tags, all of the formatting elements and to make sure you have all of them available in your target segments. Now let's also try auto suggest um, because here if you'd like to you might hide suggestions which have already been used uh, since I prefer since there are situations when you might have to uh, add the same word a number of times within one sentence I prefer not to check this box same as I do not check the case sensitive box because this will let me have more uh, suggestions available for me to uh, pick one uh, from now, as to these ones, we can also focus on language pairs when we, as you know, we can add term bases, right? We can also uh, set some of the translation memories to be used in this window, in this, um, in this uh, section. And uh, we can also add, as you know, we can add, uh, we can add auto-suggest dictionaries in this, in this section. Uh, I'd like to also focus on the keyboard shortcuts. You, we have quite a number of them, many of them, and you can actually modify whatever combination you'd like to modify for you to be uh, just convenient uh, while you translate. And uh, it is also uh, also recommended for you not to check the automatically uh, the automatic check for updates because in this case uh, you would uh, have this the, the very application started faster. And in case you have a slow uh, internet connection or you have, don't have it at all uh, it'll actually uh, it'll uh, let your uh, the start of the program go slower so if you if you'd like to speed the process up you simply need to uncheck it uh, and uh, it is also recommended for you to go to help and check for updates options some of the time to make sure you have all of the available uh, additions to your uh, application uh, installed and uh, ready for you to use now I think we're done with, uh, with this video. Let's continue with our work in the next video.